And now Neil Price, the voice of the Mississippi State Bulldogs, joining us uh, from Starkville as we count down to the Egg Bowl. Neil, always appreciate your time. Good to see you. How are things, man? Happy Thanksgiving week and happy Egg Bowl week. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you all. Um, I'm, I'm getting used to this thing being on Thanksgiving so much that, you know, I, my Thanksgiving's on Fridays, it feels like, these these days. But, uh, you know, football stadium's not a bad place, I guess, to spend Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't know how many people are giving thanks for one another in that venue uh, based on previous <laughs> experience. But, you know, uh, it's it's always entertaining, no doubt about that. It certainly is. Neil, I, I may have asked you this in the past. I, I'm curious, from what you knew of the Egg Bowl coming in to now that you've experienced a few times, how are your impressions of this game different than maybe they were initially? Well, I think that, you know, even as an outsider, you knew that it was important to people in the state. Uh, before I got here, I think that I viewed it more as – it's a great game to watch on a holiday weekend uh, if you didn't have a rooting interest. Uh, and, and now what I would tell you, having done four of them, is I was around Kentucky and Louisville for 12 years, which in that part of the world is a big deal, and it's got nothing on this. Um, it's tame compared to this. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my view of it has changed, I think, a lot in four years it, it is if you're not inside the borders of the magnolia state and you're just a casual college football fan this one flies under the radar i think a lot uh when you look at the other big rivalry games but i would tell you having been in the middle of it now that it is just as entertaining the fan bases are just as passionate it means just as much to the players on both sides as the, the big game or uh, the third or fourth Saturday in October, whatever year it might be, um, you know, uh, any of those, you know, I, I think, uh, I think that it's, it's up there. You know, Neil, the, the fascinating thing to me is that when you look at this particular game and maybe part of the reason that it does fly under the radar is Ole Miss and Mississippi state are not, always great football team sometimes the stakes are not terribly high for this game but that's not the case this year and I, I just wonder if we see a boost in the national viewing audience because it's not a game where it's just weird and oh they're probably going to fight it's a game that's got some significance to it with two pretty good football teams and it sure feels like it makes it more fun yeah and I think the other thing that helps it too is that you've got two coaches that are household names you know and that's not always been the case either uh you know now you've had some great names historically that have coached in the rivalry but I mean in terms of where where these two guys who are coaching these teams are in in the forefront of football fans minds I don't know that either team has had that kind of cachet coming into it. So, yeah, I think you're probably on to something, that there are a lot more people nationally who will be interested in it because it's it's a game that on paper you think there are going to be some points. Um, ball's going to go up and down the field. It's going to be in the air a lot, you know, and, and who doesn't enjoy watching that? So I, I do think that there will be a lot of people with a national TV audience. I think those numbers ought to be pretty good. Neil. We, we talked to David Kellum earlier, and obviously, you know, he's called so many of these games. He has quite the memory bank to draw on for, for his favorite moments. You don't have that, but you have one of the most memorable moments in the 2019 Egg Bowl. How do you call craziness like the, the final five, six minutes of that game? I think that you're just along for the ride like everybody else. I mean, there's no script for that. Um Due respect, there's no page in the broadcaster manual for a guy running over to a pylon, lifting his leg like a dog, getting a 15-yard penalty, and then the game gets decided on an extra point that's 30 yards away. I haven't found that page yet. So you're just as shocked and stunned as everybody else. <laughs> and I think it came across that way uh, in 19, you know. Um, again, Kind of what makes this one unique compared to some of the others is that strange things happen and have happened. Um, 
That said, I thought the game last year was entertaining. I thought of the three, four that I've done, it was it was the one at the end where I looked back and said, okay, nothing really out of the ordinary happened here. It was just a good football game. And yeah. I kind of hope we're headed down that path because, again, if you're trying to build – um, a national audience for a game like this, I think that both teams would love for it to be because they play good between the lines and not for whatever sideshow occurs in the middle of it. I mean, I, I just think that's what's best for the rivalry and for the game on a national level. So we'll see if we get that again, uh, like we talked about. A lot of eyeballs, you'd think, watching the game on Thursday night. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, it'll be another classic and one that people will look at and kind of, you know, bookmark and say, you know, a year from now, we want to make sure that we make plans to watch this or be part of it again. Neil, you've had a, uh, a great front row seat to watch Will Rogers uh, for the entirety of his career from kind of being thrust into it uh, a season ago and then maybe having a little bit of growth as the season went along. I thought maybe the Egg Bowl last year was kind of the point where it was like, all right, th this might work and then kind of throughout the course of this season, watching him go from good to just putting up prolific numbers. Is it as simple as experience, or is there something else that's there that has allowed him to make the jump that he's made in Mike Leach's offense? Well, the experience, I think Richard's the biggest part of it. Um, you know, Mike Leach is big on repetition and consistency. We talk about that a lot uh, on the radio show each week and in the pregame interviews and in the postgame interviews. And Will certainly is building that. You know, he's right around 20 starts now for his career. And you know, I asked Coach if, if, if 20 was like a magic number. Is that kind of like the 10,000-hour rule? If you do something for 10,000 hours, you become proficient at it. And he didn't quite agree with me on that. He thought that, that Will had something a little bit extra that's helped him cover a lot of ground in still a pretty short period of time. And what I think that is, is that he is, he's a great leader. He's a charismatic guy. Um, I think the guys in the locker room – love to play for him and love to play on a team with him. Um, you can't coach some of that kind of stuff, you know, and if you saw some of the videos online uh, that were posted, you know, from the, the comeback win at Auburn a couple weeks ago, especially the quote from Will between the third and fourth quarter akin to I'm tired of just barely beating people. I want to go out and win a game and, and, and you know, I think that that's what you want to hear from the guy who's a leader of your football team. So he checks the boxes with regard to that. Physically, he has he has certainly gotten better. Mentally, he's seeing things differently now, I think, than probably was even at the beginning of this year. And it's been a lot of fun to watch him and a lot of other really young guys on State's football team start to put it together. And you can't help but be a little bit excited about what the future might be like here, too, um, with, with a lot of those guys scheduled to come back next year. There's no doubt about that. I, I'm curious, did you take Mike Leach farther down that road of, like, debating the philosophies of Malcolm Gladwell? No, because here's the deal. Mike Leach is <laughs> infinitely smarter than I am. Uh, and, and, I mean, if you spend five minutes with him, you'll figure that out real quick. He's got a Pepperdine Law degree. And I've just got a bachelor's in mass communication. So, I mean, you know, he, uh, he's got me by a wide margin in the intelligence column there. But, hey, I'll tell you this. He, he is a wildly uh, entertaining and engaging guy to talk to. And as much as I have enjoyed talking football with him these last two years, the moments that we have in breaks in between – uh, during the radio show, the moments that we have before and after we do the pregame interview, those are among my favorites. I mean, it's it's just uh, both of us are fans of the TV show Yellowstone, and we had a long discussion about that two weeks ago and what we thought of the new season of Yellowstone. And, you know, you learn that – and it's tough, I think, at this level because there's such an, a demand on the time of coaches – from media and everybody else, uh, I, I think the thing that stands out to me is Mike Leach at his core is, is, is a regular guy. And, and I can appreciate that. And 
I, I really like that you can get to know him a little bit on a human level. And, and it's not just the, the personality that you see on TV, the mad scientist or whatever else you want to call him. You know, he's the pirate or whatever. It's, he, he's a pretty regular guy. Yeah, no doubt. I played catch up last night. I watched the first three seasons of uh, or three episodes of season four last night. Episode one, that may be the most intense hour of television I've ever seen. Neil, thanks so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you this weekend.